Hey folks, this is Kalani. A key part of any new expansion is the new factions you get to interact with, gain reputation with, and purchase a few goodies from. The overall system has changed quite a few times over the years. Warlords of Janna was a bit of an eyesore when it came to factions and rep because you had to grind your pants off to get anywhere, and you weren't ever really rewarded for having reputation with any given faction. Legion turned everything on its head, mainly due to the new world quest system. Finishing up world quests is typically to your advantage, at the start of an expansion due to the rewards, emissary quests, and the reputation they award. Just hopping over to Stormheim and doing a few world quests earns you a good chunk of reputation with the Valahar. It's just so easy and simple, and you work towards several goals at once. Battle for Azeroth is taking that same basic idea and adding in one or two new things, so let's have a look at the factions that we'll be earning reputation with in BFA, how we can go about actually earning the rep, and what rewards are on offer for our troubles. Remember, we're still in beta, so everything is still subject to change and may not reflect the finished product. Battle for Azeroth is a little unique in that each faction has their own island, which affects which factions you can earn reputation with. There's four factions for the Horde, four factions for the Alliance, and two neutral factions, so a total of six factions you can gain reputation with at any one time. Let's have a look at the Horde factions first. Each island is split into three zones, and each zone has their own faction, just like how things worked in Legion. The Zandalari Empire is tied to Zuldazar, Talanji's Expedition is tied to Nazmir, and the Voldenai is, unsurprisingly, tied to Voldoon. These reps are fairly straightforward. Any story quests completed within these areas will earn you reputation with the appropriate faction. These three factions are also the factions you need to reach friendly with to unlock world quests on the Horde side, so bear that in mind. You'll want to do at least a few quests in each zone before you hit 120, otherwise you're going to have to run around to scrape together the last few points of reputation you need at max level before you can venture out into the world with your buddies to knock all those world quests off the map. When you do unlock world quests, most of the ones available in each of these areas will be for their area faction, so if you want to farm rep with the Zandalari Empire, be sure to do all of the world quests available in Zuldazar, etc etc. Each faction also has an emissary quest, which are easy enough to complete. Finish four world quests in the faction zone and turn it into their emissary. Emissary quests currently reward 1500 reputation when you turn them in. Over on the Alliance side, we have the Proudmoor Admiralty faction, tied to Tiragard Sound, the Storm's Wake faction, tied to Stormsong Valley, and the Order of Embers faction, tied to Drustvar. These factions work in the exact same way as the Horde ones, finishing story quests will give you rep for that zone's faction. These three reputations will be the ones the Alliance needs to reach friendly with before they can unlock world quests, so once again, quest in every zone at least a little bit if you want to save yourself some time at max level. When you're completing world quests, you're going to see the same zones give reputation for the same factions, Storm's Wake from Stormsong Valley, Proudmoor Admiralty from Tyragard, and Order of Embers from Drustvar. A good chunk of your rep will probably come from Emissary Quests, which should work the same way as the Horde Emissaries, four quests in the proper zone to earn yourself 1500 rep when you hand the Emissary Quest in. As a quick note, and a little proof of beta being beta, the world quests don't show you what rep they'll award right now, so it's a bit of a guessing game sometimes, but they still do reward rep, even though they don't make it super obvious. Hopefully that's just a bug with the latest build, which will be ironed out by the time things go live. If you click on an emissary quest, it does make all of the world quests related to it a little bigger and stand out a little more, so that's one way of telling right now, but it's not in the title of the world quest like it used to be and like it is in Legion. So those reputations are pretty straightforward, but I mentioned a fourth reputation for both the Horde and the Alliance. These ones work a little differently. Instead of being tied to your zones on your island, they're tied to your faction's efforts and adventures on the enemy faction's island. The Horde efforts on Kul Taras are handled by the Honorbound, and the Alliance's incursions on Zandalar are being handled by the Seventh Legion. So not only will you have factions on the home front, but an entire faction to grind reputation with, which is to do with infiltrating the opposite faction's island, collecting intel, sabotaging their efforts together, Azerite, all that good stuff. I think the way Battle for Azeroth is set up provides a really unique way to approach the reputations available to your faction, and it's awesome that the dev team took that chance. It feels like they might actually be semi-serious about the faction conflict for once. Farming rep with these two factions seems like it's going to be a little harder though. You'd think that any world quest on the opposite faction's island would yield reputation with them but it seems like that's not going to be the case, or it's supposed to be like that and it's just a bug that these world quests aren't awarding any rep at all. Either way, the main source of reputation with these factions seems to come from the war campaigns, which have you set up a base of operations in each of your enemy faction zones to unlock new world quests and follower missions. 
to go along with your faction's specific reputations, there's also two neutral parties which both the Horde and the Alliance can earn favour with. The first is the Tortolan Seekers, who you'll meet throughout your levelling adventures. Doing them a few favours here and there is sure to earn you a bit of reputation, and they also have their own emissary and world quests, so be sure to keep an eye out for those, because it seems like these neutral reps will work in the same way the Kirin Tor world quests did, except you actually need rep with these factions. The world quests seem far and few, so much so that the emissaries only require three world quests instead of the usual four. The other neutral faction is the Champions of Azeroth, which are still a bit of a mystery. They didn't have any impact or presence during the leveling process, and I still haven't really bumped into them at max level. The Diamond King seems to spearhead this little operation, so you meet him once when he gives you your new artifact, but that's kind of it. I guess we'll see more of these guys later on. I guess this makes their world quests and emissaries even more valuable, and they work in the same way as the Tollens at the moment requiring three world quests instead of the usual four. So that's the reps you'll be farming for, and a rough guesstimate of where your rep will actually come from. But what about the rewards? If there's no shinies at the end of the grind, there's no point, right? Each reputation awards a variety of goodies, including gear on par with normal raiding gear, companion pets, tabards, and profession recipes and rank ups. Let's have a look at where each faction's quartermaster currently resides and what loot lies in wait for us. There are a few rewards which have been data mined, which aren't showing up on the vendors, so once again, beta is beta, but we'll still go through them. Let's start with the Horde again. The Zandalari Empire Emissary and Vendor can be found in the Great Seal, which should be really easy to find because that's the Horde's hub for this expansion. As a quick preface, all of the gear from these reps is broken down into 325 pieces at Honored, 340 pieces at Revered, and 355 pieces at Exalted. The 355 pieces are on par with normal all the gear, so they're going to be pretty powerful in the weeks leading up to the first raid opening. Let's see what the Zandalari Empire has on offer. There's a 325 cloak with Haste Mastery, a Crit Haste 340 Cloth Belt, Crit Haste Leather Braces, Crit Haste Male Boots, and Haste vs. Plate Legs, as well as 355 Crit vs. Cloth Legs, a Crit Haste Leather Belt, Haste vs. Male Hands, and Haste Mastery Plate Braces. That's it for the gear, but there's also a Tabard at Exalted, which looks really cool, and an Armoured Cobalt Pterodax Mount, also from Exalted. The rest is all Rank 3 and Rank 2 recipes for Alchemy, Enchanting, Engineering, Inscription, and Jewel Crafting. A lot of the profession stuff is spread out amongst nearly all vendors, so you can't just grind one reputation for one profession. You're going to have to pick and choose which recipes to pursue first. There's also supposed to be a Tome of Hex, Zandalari Tendon Ripper to change the visual effects of Hex, as well as a Polymorph Dire a horn to change mage's polymorph, and there's also a party totem toy to get the mojo flowing. Probably just another AoE dance toy. Let's move on to the Talanji Expedition. This emissary and vendor can be found in Nazmia at Zuljan Ruins. These lovely chaps can offer you another Haste Mastery Cloak, which makes me feel like these rewards might be placeholder or you're simply buying them for the transmog, some 340 Crit Mastery Cloth Legs, Crit vs. Leather Boots, Crit vs. Male Hands, and Crit vs. Plate Hands. There's an item level 300 pair of cloth gloves, which I'm assuming are supposed to be 355 because they require Exalted, some 355 Haste Mastery Leather Legs, a Verse Mastery male belt, and haste mastery plate boots. There's also a companion pet called Trag the Curious, which is sold for polished pet charms instead of gold, a Talanji's Expedition Tabard, which isn't really what I expected, but very cool nonetheless, and the Blood Swarm amount, which requires exalted reputation. If you ever wanted to fly one of these spider bat things, here's your chance. There's also rank 2 and rank 3 recipes for alchemy, enchanting, engineering, inscription, jewel crafting, and leatherworking. Let's head on over to Voldoon and check out the Voldenai. This emissary can be found at the Volpira Hideaway in Voldoon. Once again, we have a Haste Mastery 325 cloak, so hopefully one or two of these will get different stats by the time this goes live. There's some 340 Verse Mastery cloth hands, Crit Mastery leather legs, Crit Mastery male braces, and a Crit Verse plate belt. There's also a 30 slot bag thrown into the mix here, so if you didn't already pick up a full set of those, you can buy them from the Voldenai, though the auction house might still be cheaper, especially after these are made available. Back on the gear, we have a 355 Crit vs. Cloth Belt, Haste vs. Leather Braces, Crit Mastery Male Boots, and Haste vs. Plate Hands. Seeing a bit of a pattern here, it seems like only a few slots will be covered by reputations when all is said and done, but at least there's one piece of gear for each armor type from each vendor. There's also the Exalted Voldenai Mount, the Alabaster Hyena, which I think looks really awesome, I'm excited to get my hands on that one, and of course another Tabard, which is kind of different yet again, an interesting little aqua mark against the desert background. There's also some some rank 2 and rank 3 recipes for alchemy, enchanting, 
engineering, inscription, jewel crafting, leatherworking, and tailoring. We're adding a new profession each vendor we visit. The Vold and I are meant to have a whole bunch of toys available too. There's some Akunda's fire sticks for a new campfire, a desert flute to get critters to follow you, a banner to mark your slain foes in the name of the Vold and I, a ghostly explorer's skull if you want to get a little weird, and some Vulpira scrapper's armor, so you too can look super fierce. Moving on to the last Horde faction, the Honorbound, this emissary can be found at the port of Zandalar in Zuldazar. Straight away we can see another Haste Mastery 325 cloak, so I'll just throw in some previews of the cloaks as well. Again, beta is beta, so these might change when everything goes live. As for the other pieces of gear, we have some 340 crit haste cloth braces, a haste verse leather belt, verse mastery male legs, and crit haste plate boots. There's also some 355 haste mastery cloth boots, verse mastery leather hands, verse mastery male braces, and haste mastery plate legs. We have another tabard for Exalted. This one looks exactly like I would imagine from the Horde PvP faction. Very cool indeed. Then we have all of our rank 2 and rank 3 profession recipes for alchemy, blacksmithing, enchanting, engineering, and jewel crafting. So there's our first blacksmithing recipe. I guess the rest are maybe going to be on the neutral vendors. Let's hop on over to Alliance and check out the Proudmoor Admiralty Emissary, who can be found in Boralus, right smack bang in the middle of your quest pickup hub. She sells a fancy little boat cloak with 325 item level, as well as a 340 cloth belt, leather braces, male boots, and plate legs. There's also that 30 slot bag option, just in case you're in need of some easy bags and the 355 items are cloth legs, a leather belt, male hands, and plate braces. There's a tabard at Exalted, which is green with a golden anchor sign across the front. I'd expect no less from a harbour town. There's also a new horse mount at Exalted, which actually looks really cool for a horse. I'm a little jealous. That mane is glorious. Then, of course, we finish things up with professions. Alchemy, enchanting, engineering, inscription, jewel crafting, and leatherworking recipes. There's also supposed to be a cursed spyglass toy, because pirates and more pirates. Next up is the Storm's Wake Emissary, who can be found in Stormsong Valley at Brennadam. Their cloak has an interesting design, kind of looks like a pearl in the middle there. And then we have some 340 gear to go along with it. Cloth hands, leather legs, mail braces, and a plate belt. The 355 gear is a cloth belt, leather braces, mail boots, and plate hands. There's a little wee bee companion pet to collect from this rep, as well as another tabard and mount. The tabard is a little flashy, kind of an anchor symbol with an eye in the middle. I really like the colours on this one. And then the mount is another horsey, this time the dapple grey. A little more boring than the Proudmoor horse, though I do love the extra effects on the head and reins. You can also pick up some profession ranks for alchemy, enchanting, engineering, inscription, and jewel crafting. There's also supposed to be a tome of polymorph bee from these guys too, just in case a bee companion wasn't enough bees for you. The last zone-specific alliance rep is the Order of Embers, whose emissary you can find at Aram Stand in Drustvar. He sells a cloak, as you might expect at this point, as well as some 340 cloth legs, leather boots, male hands, and plate hands. There's an assumed-to-be 355 pair of cloth hands, leather legs, male belt, and plate boots. You can also pick up a pristine falcon feather to summon a companion pet. You gotta stock up those polished pet charms if you want any of these pets, I guess. And then there's an interesting tabard from Exalted. A knife through a book! on your chest. Well, at least it's different. The mount from this rep is a smoky black charger, which looks a little more boring than some of the other horse mounts in my opinion, and then more profession stuff. Alchemy, enchanting, engineering, inscription, jewel crafting, leatherworking, and tailoring. They're also meant to have a ghostly pet biscuit, just in case you wanted a spirity version of your pets, a tome of hex wicker mongrel for the shamans, and a weary spirit binding axe as a new hearthstone for your spirit. The Seventh Legion Emissary can be found in Boralus Harbour, just outside the main quest pickup area, right next to one of the ships. These chaps offer up yet another 325 cloak, as well as some 340 cloth braces, a leather belt, male legs, and plate boots. There's also 355 cloth boots, leather hands, male braces, and plate legs. There's a shiny alliance tabard for you to show off your allegiance, as well as a whole bunch more profession rank ups for alchemy, blacksmithing, enchanting, engineering, and jewel crafting. Let's finish up with the neutral faction, starting with the Tortolan Seekers. You're going to have a different emissary for the Alliance and the Horde, so the Alliance one can be found at Seekers Vista in Stormsong Valley, and the Horde one can be found at Scale Trader Post in Zuldazar. I've double triple checked these guys, and as you might expect, they sell the exact same goods to both the Horde and the Alliance, so there's no faction bias going on. There's yet another cloak, though I don't really see anything to do with scrolls in the design. For the gear, we have 340 cloth boots, leather hands, a male belt, plate braces, 355 
cloth braces, leather boots, male legs, and a plate belt. There's a companion pet called Koopa, a cute little turtle, so it's probably just a tortolan baby, which is kind of weird when you think about it, as well as a glyph recipe for the new dolphin druid aquatic form. We have a tabard at Exalted with a cool little turtle shell design, as well as a whole bunch more profession rank ups. There's alchemy, cooking, enchanting, inscription, and tailoring. There's also supposed to be a scroll of combustible critters here, which is just what it sounds like. You read a scroll to blow up any poor critters unfortunate enough to be nearby. That's all from these little guys, so let's see what we have so far on the Champions of Azeroth faction. This one is kind of frustrating, because there's a few breadcrumbs here and there, but we don't have an actual vendor, or he just doesn't want to show up. We've had an emissary quest for these guys before, which handed into Magni Bronzebeard and Silithus, so if things don't change, we'll be trekking all the way down to Silithus every time we want to hand that specific emissary in. That's not too bad for the Horde, they get a portal to and from Silithus in their faction hub, but the Alliance right now don't, which makes it a huge pain in the rear, but the flip side is my Horde character can't even see Magni, while my Alliance character character can. If things stay the way they are, I would assume both factions would get a portal down to Magni's little base of operations, and he would be both the emissary turn in and the reputation vendor, but things obviously just aren't in a finished state on the beta right now. The good news is that we can still look at what rewards are on offer from this reputation, the joys of data mining. You'll be able to purchase yet another cloak, which is probably placeholder, this doesn't look like a champion's cloak at all. They don't seem to have any 340 pieces of gear, but they do have a 355 cloth head, leather chest, male shoulders, and a plate helm. There's one recipe here for inscription for contracts, and a tabard for when you reach Exalted, which is really cool, definitely something the King of Diamonds would want us to wear. Then there's a whole bunch of pets, and I mean a whole bunch. I'm kind of wondering if some of these are meant to be spread out among the other reputations, or if this faction is just a pet hoarder. Either way, you can get your hands on eight different pets from the Champions of Azeroth's reputation. Obviously, there's still a few kings to smooth out, but I really like how the reputations are being set up in Battle for Azeroth, and it seems like there's definitely Definitely enough rewards to give you a good incentive to work towards Exalted for each one of them. There's a bit of a balance between working together and slaughtering each other too, which is interesting to see. I would say the Champions of Azeroth faction will probably bring us together again by the end of this expansion so we can work together to fight the Void, but for now we can all go crazy with War Mode. Also, as a little footnote, if you weren't yet aware, there's also contracts which scribes can craft. These contracts seem to channel all possible world quest rep into a faction of your choice, so you can just farm one rep at a time by using a contract, so honestly you probably don't need to worry about anything in the long run, you'll be able to just target any rep you want at any time, providing you can get your hands on a contract. That's it for our little preview of reputations and rewards in Battle for Azeroth. What do you think so far? Is there anything that caught your eye from the rewards? Leave all your thoughts in the comments section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon. If you're on top of that train, you can find a link in the description below. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave, and if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always, I will see you next time.